and welcome to my channel. This is the first of my Christmas crafts 2021. Uh, it's a dome card, there's plenty of tutorials on um, YouTube on how to do these, but this is just my little take on it. I'm using some stamps that I got free on a uh, magazine and I've got some embellishments which are from Crafter's Companion and uh, papers from other places so I'll show you what you need to make this in a second. As you can see I don't know how well it's picking it up. I've got some little bells hanging here so when it stands up it should make some noise for the person who's, who's got it and Santa's propped up so it's a bit more 3D just gives a bit more dimension to the card so uh, let me show you how to do it right so what you'll need is quite a bit here so I'll go through it slowly for you I've got some um, matting and layering dies which are crafters companion and these are the squares um, this is what I'm going to use to make the aperture and the frame that goes around the aperture if you haven't got these you can use just a ruler and a pencil and a craft knife uh, if you've not got these or uh, an emboss uh, cutting machine then the stamps that I've used are from uh, I don't think you can actually do that very well let's do this they're from uh, magazine was a like creative stamping issue 100 it was a like a, a birthday issue and uh, they did four sort of like four themes of stamps within the magazine um, and they're all crafters companions so this is from the nativity collection and then this one is the enchanted christmas i've got some of the other stamps from uh, this one so uh, there might be tutorials with that coming in the future and then, the one that I used on the card I've shown you was the Santa and that is from the cute Christmas collection so but the card that I'm going to show you how to make I'm using the, um, the little penguin and then the last set on that collection is the glittering snowflakes collection and it's just got some nice snowflakes and trees and some baubles and some nice sentiments for you to use so you could use them in this card as well if you wanted to but I'm just using the uh, penguin to uh, make it a different sort from what I've already made sorry I've got a pile of stuff up next to me and I always end up in a model so I've stamped and coloured um, the image that I'm going to use. If you haven't got these, uh, what you can do is the you can get different toppers from different places. But from the paper um, range that I'm using, they also had toppers and wooden embellishments. So if you're not a fan of colouring or you've not got the stamps or anything like that, don't feel bad. I mean, you can even cut up some old uh, Christmas cards that you've got to create one of your own toppers, so you can put it in the uh, dome. So don't think that you can't ever make something because if you've not got the same products as what I'm using so that's basically just what I'm meaning and then you'll need an A4 piece of card and then you'll need two more A4 pieces of card this one is basically just for uh, the base which it will go on I've got like a baby uh, blue it's a Centura Pearl card it, I love this card and then uh, I've got uh, two pieces of um, white stamping card stock which I'm using for the rest of it but I'll, I'll show you that in a second I've got some blue glitter um, paper which I'm going to make the frame from and the sentiments that I'm putting on the front and then you also need uh, a piece of card which is let's double check is one inch by three inch and then this part is for the dome and this one measures uh, eight and a quarter inch by seven and a half inch. So that's for the dome. And then you just need uh, an A4 cut in half, so an A5 sheet, which is a eight and a quarter by five and seven eighths. If um, you know, you just wanted to know exactly what they are. And that's just going to go at the back of the uh, penguin. And then, oh, got this wrong way around. As much preparation I've got done, I still get it the wrong way around. Um, this is the paper uh, collection that I'm using. I got it from the range uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's still in stock now, uh, the one that I went to. Um, it's lovely papers. There's 12 different designs and you get two of each. Um, as you can see, I used the... Um, is near the top again? That's the one that I used on the card. 
Right, so I'm glad this paper uh, collection is just really, really nice. Um, it's got a nice sheen to it, the uh, paper. It feels a little bit like wrapping paper, but thick wrapping paper. Um, but it's really nice to work with. So we'll uh, jump straight in and uh, get started with our card. So, pull that out of the way. So, first of all, you want your piece of cardstock, which is going to be your base, which is just a standard A4 size. Um, if you've got a score on board, then you need to work score at uh, five and seven eighths. But if you've got a crafter's companion like me, you'd, it has got the A4 half fold. I just wanted to show you uh, what it is on there. So, let's get my embossing tool. I always left it out. So, that's at five and seven eighths. No. There we go. And then rather than doing it in one really strong movement, just do a few soft ones and then it just reduces the uh, chance of uh, yeah, tearing into the card. But Cinchora feels really uh, a good quality cardstock so it's um, it's not likely to. So you've scored on that side but then you're flipping it over. Oh, not my camera now. And then... And then once you've folded it over and you just want to burnish it, you could either use your side of your, your scissors or the uh, embossing tool if that's how you've scored it. Or even if you've got some uh, store-bought A5 cards, you can use them. I'm just using this because I've got a lot of cardstock and uh, that's what I wanted to do. Right, so bring back in um, the other pieces. So this is the backing part that the image is going to uh, be in front of and then this is the dome like I said before. So what I've done is because the papers are strong enough to create the dome on its own I've cut the cardstock to eight and a quarter by seven and a half inch and I also cut a piece of the paper to the same size and then I stuck it on with some Kalala glue and um, trimmed around the, the edge so that's basically what it is and then for that one you need to score it at I can remember right a quarter of an inch so it's half an inch with, uh, uh, on your left hand side and then a seven inch on the right hand side and then what we will do eventually is we will fold and burnish these score lines like uh, we did on the card base um, but we'll not do that now because I'm sending mine through the um, uh, Gemini just to get my aperture cut out. Now to figure out where I wanted the aperture to go I'm turning it over and working on the back side uh, and I wanted it to be exactly in the middle. You don't have to have it exactly in the middle, it's totally up to you. This is just me and I don't do <laughs> very good at uh, eyeballing stuff. So I just marked halfway on each either side and then I've just drawn across in the cent uh, in the centre and I'm doing a four inch square uh, aperture size so in the set you get all these different sizes those are the two that we're using so I'm getting it's the fourth one in from the edge to start with to create the aperture and the other one will be for us to create the uh, border that will go around the outside so as you can see I've just drawn around it around there on the other one I uh, had a piece of card left over and I drew around it but because it's a four inch square you just want to make sure that it's two inch either side and then just line that up just make sure that you can get it as straight as you can and then if you get some low tack tape and always put it on the piece that you're going to be cutting out because then uh, like the opposite side of this I could use it for another project so with me sticking it on this side it's um, it's not going to damage the paper on the front so I'll go and get this cut and I'll be back in a moment so I've got that cut out now and I've got this nice four inch square piece of uh, pattern card that I can use on another project so on the next thing to do is to create our Where's it come? Our little frame that will go around the edge. Now, as you can see, I've just took a, a piece of A4 glitter card. 
think this is actually a DC card, Crafter's Companion as, again. And I'll show you how I laid down the, the dies. So, because this in aligns the size of what the aperture that we've cut, we want to go to the next one so that we've got a nice, I think it's about a quarter of an inch uh, difference all around. So, as you're laying them down, just like they will come in the packet, basically what we're doing is, and then putting the next one up around it, and then basically making sure that we've got that same distance around, and then putting it through the um, uh, Gemini cutting machine, well, that's one that I've got, uh, just so that it creates this, and then again, you're left with a, a four inch square piece that you can use on another project, and the rest of the card you can use for something else. Them to the side. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this. Well, now I've just realised I've got a mark on my. Hopefully, that'll work come out when I'm smoothing out the card, but never mind, that's probably because my plates got shifted in the machine. So, I'm going to stick that like that, and I'm going to use some tacky glue. The reason I'm not using cloud glue for this is because it's a shiny surface. I'm not too sure whether it could actually stick very well with the uh, cloud. I know the cloud doesn't uh, do very well with glitter and things like that. It tends to take the colour off it. If you get it on the opposite side and you try rubbing it away like you would normally with cloud, uh, it takes away the colour from uh, what you're doing. Right, I've got that stuck on, and that's just a nice little frame there. I think I might have actually the paper a little. Uh, I've seen where my marks are. That's where the edge of the plates have been, but never mind. I'll uh, try and cover them up with something else later. Right, but anyway, now we've got that one. So now that we've sent this through the machine and we've got um, done to it what we need to do, I'm going to fold and burnish these lines. So if you can just take your bone folder. Or the edge of your scissors, just fold back on those score lines and just burnish them. And it's really strong, this because I've stuck the uh, card with the paper with the uh, cloud because it, it's not shiny on the back, so I knew it would stick okay. Um, but the cloud goes really good for um, giving you structure and firmness to your paper and card. So we've got the front of our dome ready. So essentially that will go like that and then this will go behind here which I'm just going to show you how to do that and then it will stick to the front of this. So now because we're wanting a, a dome light so if we just manipulate the card a little bit and because it's uh, quite a firm card it will keep the shape. Just use your fingers to curl the card just to get it into the shape that you want it to be. You could even use a rolling pin if you've got one to just do this and mould it round there. So, and then the next thing is we're going to stick those at either side of that. So, because this piece of card is narrower and we stick it to where the score lines are, that's what creates the little dome. Uh, for the front of the card. So I'll just get my tape pen. So what I like to do is I like to double stick um, the so I'll put some glue down on this uh, score line and then I'll put it on the side where it's it's going to touch on the other piece. So because the tabs are going to go on the back, just put an, a line down there. Sounds rather creepy that, that noise. So and then you're just putting it up 
right into the score line and then just press it down flat. and because you're doing glue to glue it'll stick even better than it usually would do just the yeah, paper coming away from the backing but you'll not see that and then you just do exactly the same on the other half Now you shouldn't be able to see any of these uh, lines that you've drawn, but if they bother you, just rub them out before you finish this bit. My tape pen decides to run out while I'm on the camera. Never mind. So again, just pop it up to the score line, and then just give it a rub. If you can get your hands on the inside, just to press it from either side. And there you've got the dough. So, next part, just going to stick it to the front of here. So, we can. Uh, where's my big thing with Ducky Boo? It's disappeared. Right, I'm not to use this one. So, I'm using tacky glue just so that it, it's got a more firm grab than regular PBA. It doesn't want to come out. Fact, I'm not going to see the underside of this, so we could actually use Kalan glue to stick it to it. Get your brain in here, Rebecca. There we go. Plus, this one will make it even more firm. Right, so make sure you, if you've got directional paper, just make sure that you've got it the right way up. And because you're using a wet glue, you've got that wiggle time to get in how you want it. So the edge of the dome goes up to the side of the card and the same on the other side. So that's the card base done. So you can put that to the side and let that dry. And then there's my little penguin. So. I've stamped and coloured in my penguin and then I've cut him out and just left a little white border around the edge. If you don't like leaving a white border cut to the edge, it's totally up to you. Or again, I say, if you've just got an image off like an old card or something that you want to use, you can use those, that's absolutely fine. Now, how I made the centre pop up a little bit, I made sort of like a little stand for him to go on. And this is the piece that is one inch by three inch and I've scored it at half an inch, one inch, two inch and two and a, two and a half inch. So what we're going to do is uh, we're bending the first one down so that's a valley fold and the next one's a mountain, next one's a mountain and the next is a valley. So you've got valley, mountain, valley. So that's how that should look. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick this to the back of Mr. Penguin. And then we're going to stick it to the inside of the dome. So we'll stick it to him first. The aperture can be any shape that you want. I just uh, decided to do square because I got the uh, new dies the other day and I wanted to use them. Right, there we go. So I want to fold that one a little bit wonky but never mind it won't be seen. So that props up a little bit now. So with the centre I did him down in the bottom corner because the, the image finishes off at sort of his waist and he's reading his list whereas this one I want to have directly in the middle. That's just uh, how I want to do it with it. So, so put some tacky glue or double sided tape if you prefer onto these bits and then just line it up where you want it to go and like I say you have got that little wiggle time and you can press down on it because the 
it'll pop back up. You've got it. There. Just try and get your fingers underneath and just press the the little pieces down just so that they're really secure. And then that's our little penguin. So next on the to-do list is to create the little decoration pieces um, that I've, I've put here. The little candy canes I've made myself from uh, polymer clay. Might do a um, tutorial uh, another day on how to make these. They're really easy and these are probably about an inch high. They're, they're not very big at all. And then also I've got some bells. I think one may have rolled away. I've got it. So I've got three little bells. Red, green and silver. I've got a little weather cone. And oh, these very summer supposed to look like they've got frost on and some are just plain. And all of these are from the Crafters Companion, uh, I think it was the Twas the Night Before Christmas uh, collection if I'm remembering right. And they're like a little packet of these things coming in and then there were a packet of bells. But you can get them all over if you know, can't get those specific ones. And then also I've already die cut out the sentiment that I want to put on the card. I've got Merry Christmas and I've just used the same glitter card as what I cut the frame out. Um, on the Santa one I did a big sort of banner at the bottom whereas on this one I think I might uh, put it at the top. I'll, I'll have a play around before I fully decide where I want to, to put it. So those are all the decorative pieces. So to make uh, the dangle, well the, the uh, dangling bells and the bit at the top is just get some um, twine, can be whatever colour you want it to be, this is just like uh, Christmas colours and I've had this absolutely ages, I can't even remember where I got it from but it's just red, green and white and just get a decent length of it because you can always cut away, you don't want to not have enough and then uh, regret doing that so to start off with, I'm just going to thread these uh, little bells. Now this is probably the most awkward part. Because it's twine it wants to unravel. Right, got there in the end. It took uh, long enough. So, if you just make sure that your twine is in half, and then I've just put a little bell at either side of the larger silver one, and then just tie a knot, just to keep them so they're in place for when, the, when they dangle. And then you just need to decide on how high you want it positioning on your card as to how how you, you want to rest your, your thread before uh, sticking your other pieces on. So the way that I did the other one was sort of when I measured it by eye that one and uh, I sort of just did a little, in fact no I didn't, I put my twigs in first, I'll tell you. I've not done a video in a while so I'll uh, more fingers and thumbs today. So I've got the, the berries and then I just Basically, because they've got little wires, you can twist them round one another 
and get them into the position that you want. That's really easy. We'll be cutting the majority of um, the wire away once we've got it uh, how we want it to go. So I've just got them like that and then you can bend them into whatever position you want them to be in. So I'll then take back and do your loose knot with it and then you just pop these through there right up to the top part. And we will be hot gluing this down as well so that that will be another uh, thing to reinforce the, the weight. In fact, I've gone a little bit high on that one. Trial and error here. I want to leave these in so you can see, you know, this is my process of how I, I do make cards. Because you see these videos on YouTube and people are doing these fantastic cards but don't show all the uh, things that not go wrong but uh, make you change your decision on what you're wanting to do or just won't work for a different car as what you've done on another one. So, right, I think that's a little bit better. Yeah, that's that's a lot better. Then so, I just wiggle the thread further up to the top and then I created another little knot on after that one. Right, so as you can see now, we're not going to need all this wire at the bottom here. So if you get some little wire clippers, and I'll just... These are not the sharpest ones. Oh, they actually went through a lot quicker than I thought they would. So I've got that little piece now. So we're going to stick that to the card, and we're going to put the um, weather cone with it as well. Just make sure my... Yep, go gun's ready. So, where that I did the Santa one, I stuck this down first. So, I want it up in this top left hand corner. So, I put a little bit of hot glue. Sorry, my cord doesn't uh, stretch far enough for me to show you me doing it. But, I just put a blob of hot glue where the knot is, where we've put it all around there. And then once that dries, it will secure the twine as well. Okay. And then the next bit, where are we? Let's see if we... Let me move my... Oh, might just, might just get it. Oh, I finally got in. Right. So what I'm going to do now is these little weather cones don't have wire on them. So I'm just putting a, a blob of hot glue there. And then just press it where I want it to, to go and just hold it in place until it dries. There we go. And then the two little candy canes. I want one up here, one to the right, and one to the left. So look like that. So again a little bit of hot glue and be careful when you're putting this on because these are so small it's quite easy to get the hot glue on you if you don't want to put it down the back of the cane you could also just pop it on the end of the cane on this if I hold it up on this one so I've just got the hot glue on the end of it and because I'm tucking it under you're not going to see the glue if you just hide it underneath the berries. The thing with hot glue you get all this stringy stuff while it's drying. So I've got that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these a little bit shorter and then I'm going to make a bow out of some of the other twine just so that it looks more like it's uh, more tied like a, a proper bunch of flowers. Where have you gone my little twine? There we go. Again, just take a good amount of because it might take you a while to 
uh, make your little bow that you're wanting to do. So, do a little loop. I'm sure you probably know how to make a bow. There we go. And then just adjust it to how you want the bow to be, whether if you want it to be a rather large bow or a bow or a small one. And then just before you finish it off, just pop it in place and see whether if it looks right for you. So that's about right for me, I think. And then I can use that leftover bit on something else. And then again, a little bit of hot glue just on the back of the, the bow. And then press it into place. And that's a bit finished and then all that's left to do is to put my sentiment on now on the other one I put them both at the bottom but I don't know whether to put whether to have that there or there I'm gonna have to turn it around for a minute to say I can't <laughs> I can't do it upside down oh. We're nearly getting Christmas and maybe the wrong, wrong way around. Uh, well, I'm going to put them up at the bottom again, but I'm not going to make that um, matte and layer piece like I did on the other one. Oh, yeah, and I'll just stick this down with some more tacky glue. And that's our card finished. So if you want to just curl it a little bit more, make sure that the dome's how you want it to be. I might put some peel-offs down here on this bit off camera because uh, it's bugging me now and all these lines are here. That's what uh, the plates have done. I should have used my larger plates so that I didn't get the uh, ridges on it that I've got. So that's our little dome card. So obviously this one won't be able to go into a standard envelope, it'll have to go into a little box. So I'll do a separate tutorial on how to make that. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, I've made sense. And if you've got any questions, uh, just put a question in the uh, comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks a lot then. Bye.